Rob, welcome to the show, man. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm good, Drew. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate this. Dude, my pleasure. Thanks so much for coming on. Um, so first question I have for you, man, is how long have you been in this industry and what were you doing before this? <laughs> I got involved in the in the health industry, right? I, 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 hard, I have a hard time labeling the health <laughs> industry when I first started because that was not at all what I think I was doing. Um, uh, back in 2007, okay. that's, that's basically when I made the transition. I moved to Los Angeles in 2005 as an actor. Um, uh, and before that, I was in New York for three years as an actor, so I spent about five years trying to be an actor in the, in the industry and um, – I'm I'm not a bad looking guy, but obviously looks does not make a difference when it comes to making it in this in this in this business. So um, after about five years, I realized, you know what? I don't think this is going to pan out. Um, I got to figure out something else. And in the in the in the process of trying to make it as an actor, I had started training some guy um, that was in a play with me. I had to take my shirt off in this play, and I had gotten all like ripped for this for this part in a play. And one of the actors that was in it with me, he goes, "How did you get to look like that?" I was like, well, I work out, I, I, uh, I eat healthy, you know, at least I thought I was eating healthy at the time. <laughs> I was basically just starving myself. And, um, and he's just like, would you show me how to do that? And I, I was like, well, I'm not really a trainer. And he's like, doesn't matter. I'll pay you. I was like, wow. deal. If you're going to pay me. I'll take it. Right. <laughs> so I ended up, uh, training that guy. Uh, and in the process, got my personal training certifications and advanced certifications and such and started really digging into the fitness world. Uh, he lost 100 pounds in that first year, wow. which was I was like, OK, <clears throat> this is there's something really rewarding about this. And um, and then ever since then, I've been kind of, you know, learning and, and applying and learning and applying and learning and applying on myself as well as on my clients. And uh, and here we are. That was uh, that was 11 years ago. I mean, yeah. So now it's 11 years later and. And, uh, and we land here, <laughs> through Manning. <laughs> Is that where the transition happened? Like you stopped acting at that point and started taking on personal training? Was that the, or did you still act after that? I was doing three things at once. Okay. I was, I was, a, I was a personal trainer. I was an actor and I was uh, a waiter mm. and I was making all of my money, my money as a waiter. Okay. Um, I was waiting tables, I was managing a restaurant, and I was bartending technically. Wow. I was doing all of those things, and I was building a personal training business, and I was trying to make it as an actor. Wow. And uh, it's a really weird thing. I, I ended up taking this course, and you know, when you're, when you're a personal trainer, you immediately step foot into being a business person. You have to learn about business. And so I ended up taking this, it's called a Millionaire Mind Seminar, that was, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, it's, it's kind of popular, but... Uh, I took this seminar and one of the things the guy said really landed on me and I, and I, I needed to apply it. And he said, you know, if you have, if you have your foot on too many paths, you'll never make any progress on any of them. Mm. And so for me, the way that that made sense was like, as a waiter, I didn't give a, sh like, I didn't care about becoming <laughs> a waiter. Right. Sure. But I was as an actor and as a personal trainer, I had to make a choice. Mm. What was going to be the path that was going to lead me down a life that I was going to be happy with. And, and happiness for me meant security, meant a comfortability, meant not feeling like I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know where I'm going to be in five years. And so that security meant I was going to, I was going to move away from acting, which gave me a lot of anxiety. There's a hell of a lot of anxiety when it comes yeah. to being an actor and relying on whether or not somebody likes you is how you get, is whether or not you get the job. I yeah. guess as a personal trainer, that's the same thing. I mean, it's, <laughs> as a podcast, it's the same thing. People have to like you yeah. in order to listen and then stay and stay listening. But as a as an actor, it's really tough, and it's a real ego shot every day of the week to be able to handle that. And you really do have to have uh, a real sense of self and and a and a, and a uh, sense of security, which I guess I didn't really have at the time. Um, and so, therefore, I moved into being a personal trainer and really diving headfirst into that business. And, um, and, and I love it. I mean, I really yeah. enjoy it. I enjoy helping people and I enjoy helping myself, you know, because that's, there was a lot of, as I went and moved into that field, I realized the importance of it within myself and how I, if I didn't discover this, if I didn't discover, you know, nutrition, health, a, a lifestyle around all of that, that, that would lead me down a path of, um, that my parents took. Uh, or and are still on, and my family all took because they all still live on Long Island where I'm from, and they all took that same path, and all of them are struggling with their health in some way or another. Mm. So that's um, it, that was a real that was a real fork in the road for me. 
Gotcha. And we'll get back to that in a second because I want to talk yeah. about your family. Uh, but let's let's back up a little bit. Um, so let me ask you this. Growing up, were you, you know, you said you're in shape for this play. Were you kind of always in shape or did you, you know, were, were you overweight at some point in time or were you just kind of always athletic? I, as a kid, um, as a kid, I was always in sports. Okay. It was something my parents always made me play sports. Um, I was in, when I was really young, it was soccer and baseball. And then as I got older, I wasn't really a team sport kind of kid. So I moved into being a swimmer and a wrestler. Mm. And I did that from junior high until high school. And then when I graduated college or when I graduated high school, I went to a community college for a couple of years because I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And I, and that's when I discovered acting. And then I did that for 10 years. And so as an actor, when I went to acting school, I went to a conservatory, which is a college for artists, basically. Uh, they don't have sports teams. So I didn't have a sport to do. And I just kept getting more and more unhealthy. And as my, you know, I would, I would do what my mom taught me how to do, which was when you kind of, when you get fat, you starve yourself or you diet down. And that's what I learned as a wrestler as well. Yeah, yeah. Like when you get fat, you diet down, you just, and then you just keep repeating that cycle. So when that guy discovered me in that play, I had just dieted down for that. And then right after that play, I gained all the weight right back, uh, you know, gotcha. and it was, a, it was a complete vanity thing. It wasn't like I was doing it in a, in a smart way. And like, that's what I mean. In the beginning, I probably wasn't helping, even though he lost a hundred pounds, I probably wasn't helping him all that much <laughs> as much as him being inspired to work out more often. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the journey it took. I I there's you probably see it on my website where at like 30 years old when I got married, that was when I realized I have a problem here. Yeah. Like I really I really do have a problem. I I I you know, I always thought of myself as being athletic and I got caught off guard. My wife took a picture of me standing at a waterfall and um and I saw my gut hanging out. Maybe like maybe in month three of your like weight gain, that's kind of where I <laughs> felt like I was. Yeah. And I was really disappointed in myself and kind of disgusted. And I realized I have to not only make a change in uh, in how I work out, but also and, and how I eat, but also my lifestyle around all of that. Yeah. And that's been the journey over the last 10 years. Um, for me or 11 years. Yeah. But I think it's really powerful to have those moments for everybody. Um, yeah. And it's not always about vanity. It's not always about waking. Sometimes it's a wake up call with type two diabetes or some serious health condition where it kind of scares you into like, okay, I got to make some changes. And I think everybody hits that at some point. Right. Um, and for some people, it sometimes happens too late in life or later on in life when it's harder to make changes. Uh, but mm -hmm. I think those moments are really powerful for all of us to have. And I think you know, one of the questions I want to ask you next is, is does that carry over into you as be, as uh, becoming a trainer slash coach to have that empathy for your clients? Because you can kind of say, look, I know what you're going through. I've been there. It's hard. And I, you know, I've had to find a way to make this a lifestyle change because you knew how to do it in a diet format where you're like, okay, I'm going to diet down. I know how to get yeah. there. I just yeah. don't know how to maintain that. Does that, did that carry over for you having that experience? <laughs> Yes, and I'll, and I think it's in a different way than maybe you would think. It's um it's more about the psychological aspect mm. of it. In that I definitely struggle with struggle with anxiety uh, around body image. <clears throat> I struggle with anxiety around food. Um, um, I struggle with depression in a way that I that I understand that mentality when I'm working with a client. I understand that like if you fire hose a client with information and it's different. There are different people that come to you potentially that would come to me. And also like there's, you know, um, there's a bunch of different people out there that are phenomenal trainers, you know, that are just like, they, they, they only train athletes. If you're if, at that level, you can't talk to somebody about psychology. It's just about being a type personality. It's just about getting the job done. It's about really achieving. Yeah. But when you're talking to people about changing a lifestyle and it's attached to uh, emotions around eating, it's attached to body image, it's attached to a whole bunch of baggage that you got from your parents, um, that I can, that's how I think I relate to my clients. Yeah. Maybe I don't struggle with the heavy, heavy weight, you know, like gain, like, uh, you know, like, and the, like you went through with your clients, which helped you really make bridge that gap, which I yeah. think is amazing. And really not only, not only smart, obviously, because it, <laughs> it landed you where you are business wise, but also empathetically for you to do that with your clients was such an amazing kind of olive branch to say, I'm willing to do this with you. 
So I yeah. never took that path. And I talked to you about that on my show when, we, <laughs> yeah. when, you, when I interviewed you. It was like, I don't think I have the ego for that. Like, I don't think, I don't think my ego would be able to take that. <laughs> I think I would probably, I would have a real hard time. You know, you're like, I imagine it's like, it's almost like, uh, you know, those, those, um, fire, those, those planes that dive into the fires yes, and like yeah. they drop the water or that stuff on the fire. Yeah. I don't think I'd be able to pull out. <laughs> you know, like that would be me loot. Like this is me gaining weight, right? That's dropping into the fire, and then you you got to pull out, and then you got to get healthy again. I don't know if I'd be able to pull out at that point. Yeah. I just I don't ever want to go there because my fear is that I wouldn't be able to. <laughs> no, you know? that's and a legit they, reason. <laughs> yeah, and it's just. But the thing is, is that I know that about myself. So what I do is I just I needed to create a lifestyle for myself that was going to you know keep me healthy. And a lot of that is like fear of ending up like my, like I said, like family members. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then we could, like I said, like you said, we could talk about that in just a little bit. Yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll get into that in a second. Let's back up to your story a little bit. So you trained this client, you had awesome success. Um, mm -hmm. and then from there, how did you, did you start working for yourself or for a gym, like taking on more clients? How did you build up your business to where it is today? Yeah, that's a good question that I think <laughs> that a lot of people are always wonder, especially first time personal trainers when yeah. they first get started. Um, so the way I did it was probably, um, very backwards to what most people would do. I didn't want to ever work in a box gym. Mm. Um, I didn't want to work in a, in like a 24 hour fitness or a, even, you know, a gold gym. My wife worked out at, um, she trained people. She's a gyrotonic instructor, uh, at sports club LA, which now got bought up by Equinox. Okay. And she was a trainer there. And she would tell me how much money they would take from their, their trainers. The tra they're, tra they're starting out at $75 an hour for a client that comes in, but the trainer only gets paid, I think, 15. Yeah. It was bananas. <laughs> and I'm like, well, the trainer's putting all, all this time into building customer relations and doing all this work. Why would I want to ever do that? Well, it's obviously it's because of the traffic walking through the door. So yeah. what I did was um, at that same seminar that I told you about earlier that talked about the fork in the road and you have yeah. to make a choice – said that when, if you are going to create a business for yourself, you need to become the resident expert about everyone that you know. That's what you need to do. And that's what you did mm -hmm. by gaining weight and losing it. You, you created a, a profile for yourself that showed everyone what you were capable of doing. Yeah. Not only with yourself, but also with your clients. Mm -hmm. And that's really smart. And it just, it, so what I did at the time was, I knew that I, I knew that I had learned enough. And what I did was just in terms of picking up clients to really make them guinea pigs for me, I put an ad on Craigslist mm. and I said, <laughs> I didn't say new personal trainer. I said, personal trainer, um, uh, getting a new certification. It was my first certification, um, getting a new certification and, uh, wants to apply these new techniques on, um, on some, uh, on clientele, giving a discounted rate. Mm. And I put it for 20 bucks an hour, right? Yeah. <laughs> And nobody crickets, yeah. nobody applied, nobody messaged me back. So I, um, my wife actually was the one who made this recommendation. She goes, Rob, it's too cheap. Double the price. Yeah. And that's what I did. I doubled the price and I immediately started getting people, uh, emailing me. And the next thing I knew I had like five or six clients that I was like working with and practicing on. And I crushed my, my personal training certification course and just really did apply all of that stuff and learned a hell of a lot. And I didn't know a lot about nutrition at the time. So that was my, that was my Achilles heel. So what I did was I had a best friend of mine that I, that I was in college with. His name is Jeff Meacham. He was the first guy on my, on my podcast, one of my co-hosts on my podcast. Yeah. Um, he's now on that show blackish. If anybody watches that show, oh, yeah. he plays Josh, the <laughs> white guy on that show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, and he's hilarious. So I said to Jeff, he's always, Jeff's always been overweight. I've known Jeff, um, going on 20 years now, 20, yeah. tw over 20 years. And he's always been overweight. He's never had a six pack. He's always been an athlete, but always been one of those like, you know, endomorph athletes kind of big yeah. and bulky. So I said to Jeff, I go, look, your wife is a holistic nutrition counselor. I'm a personal trainer. I'll train you for free for three months, but you have to do everything I tell you to do. And I'm going to talk to Christy, your wife. Uh, who I've also had on my show and I'm going to, and we are going to put together a plan for you, but you have to stick to it. Otherwise you're wasting both of our time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and we're going to document every step of the way. So we did, we took pictures of him every step of the way. He did a blog, he did some video stuff and we did, we got him from, we had lost in, in, in 12 weeks, he lost 22 pounds. And for the first time and only time in his life, <laughs> he had a six pack. 
Wow. And it was like, it was like the coolest thing ever. And I documented it the whole step of the way, every step of the way on Facebook on, but we only really had Facebook back yeah. then. There wasn't yeah. any Twitter. There was no Instagram back then. So everything was on Facebook. Uh, and my clients started rolling in and that was it. I just, I, all I needed to do was prove that I can do what I said I could do mm -hmm. and, and show everybody the, the process. Yeah. And, and then people started paying me for that same sky fit challenge. Cause that's what I called it then. And I still have that today, Yeah, but it's taken on many, many forms throughout the process. And then I would host and whenever my client base would get low and this is a really good, uh, yeah. application for any new trainers. Whenever my client base would start to get low, I would host the chat. I would host a contest where I would give away a free 12 weeks for, for one lucky person. I would have like 10 or 15 people send me emails put fill in an application. Yeah. They would have certain things that they were responsible for doing. And then they would, uh, and then I would pick one person and then I would send them through the challenge again. And I do the same thing and they would crush. And then I would document the whole process. And again, a flood of new clients would come yeah. in. Yeah. And that's what I did for the first, you know, for the first two or three years as I was really kind of getting my, getting my footing on, in, yeah. the, in the business. And I, so I never, every single client I had for the first three years, I, I trained them outside in the park. I never trained anybody inside. Wow. <laughs> I, everything was, I live in Los Angeles. Everything was bands, vegetables, hills, uh, you know, outside, anything we can use outside. Yeah. Um, we utilized it and I carried it all in my backpack. It was pretty, <laughs> it was pretty awesome. So funny. Here's a funny story. And I love that by the way. Um, and, uh, I'll tell you why in a second, but basically my story when I first became a personal trainer was very similar ads on Craigslist. I didn't work for a big box gym because I really? saw how much I was going to not make. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <clears throat> and I did the ads on Craigslist. I did $25 an hour, but it did get clients. <laughs> so <laughs> I think the $20 point was, uh, uh, you know, two yeah, over threshold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I live in Utah. It's different. I remember one person That's telling true. me like $25 for an hour. That seems really expensive. I'm like, what? Like, really? <laughs> I was like, do you have yeah. any idea how much it would cost if you went to a gym? It's just, different mentality out here in Utah. So, yeah. um, but yeah, I took on clients, uh, through Craigslist initially. So very interesting story. Um, yeah. so that was the first two or three years. And then here's the problem that I think a lot of tra trainers run into is like, Oh, I'm going to make so much money, which is good. But you realize there's only so many hours in a day and you yep. can only fit in so many clients and you can travel yep. around to wherever. And then you're like, okay, I, you know, I, I only get paid when I work when I don't work, I don't get paid. How do I maximize this? So, yeah. um, you know, maybe keep going with your story as far as like how yeah. you turn this into a full time business because it's been, you know, 10 years now, right? Since 2007. Right. So that's a really, okay, good. I'm glad. This is actually a fun conversation. I had no idea what we're going to talk about, but this is, <laughs> this is, this is interesting for me because it takes me through the process of what I really did. So those first few years, it was all about building one on one clients. And, and yes, I had that thought of like, okay, here's the ceiling. What do I do? Now, People were telling me at the time that I needed to do, um, I needed to have, what is it called? Um, like, um, an online presence. Yeah. Like I needed to build up my, I needed to build up my, you know, uh, like online coaching, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. But at the time, this was like seven years ago, six, seven years ago, I did not want to do that. Like I was, I was not, um, I just, I think I was just scared. I yeah. didn't understand online stuff. I didn't know what it was like. Um, I didn't know if I'd be able to under like really get it all put together. And I thought it was going to be too much of a financial investment. So what I did was, is I started thinking, how do I, instead of having one client at a time, what if I ran a boot camp and I had 10, 15, 20 clients at a time? So I, that's what I started. I started doing a boot camp in Los Angeles at that same park yeah. and hosting it, um, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. Um, I couldn't get the time in the morning to train people at seven, eight or nine because there was, there was another boot camp in the park at the time. Oh. So the only time that I could get was 10 30 AM. So I was clever. I was like, okay, um, 10 30 AM that kind of blows. Um, so I have to pick a good name. It can't be like, it can't just be a boot camp. So I changed, I, instead of calling a boot camp, I called it lunch crunch workout mm. where it's like you have like a free hour. Right. And I was thinking I was going to do 1030 a.m. And then noon was you're going to be was going to be your workout times. And the noon one was impossible. People were like, I can't get there and back. It doesn't it doesn't work. And the 1030 one, um, I decided to market it 100 percent to stay at home parents. Mm. So what I did was I went to. <laughs> so this is just this is how our minds work. Right. Yeah. We just 
we start like thinking like who is available at this time. <laughs> Actors were available. I was available. I was an actor right up until then. Yeah. So I was like, I this is when I work out. 10:30 in the morning is when like every actor works out. Yeah. However, actors are flakes and they're broke. So <laughs> they they're not going to be a part of this 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 uh this boot camp. Yeah. So I put together this cover letter and I went I went to every single preschool in my area within like a two mile radius. And I, I asked to talk to the, to the, to the, you know, whoever the head person is. Yeah. And I sat down with them and I go, look, I created a boot camp, and this is not true at all, but that's what I told them. I said, I created a boot camp specifically for stay at home parents who are dropping their kids off at preschool and only have a few hours to run some errands and want to squeeze a workout in. And the best of all, it's, it's, you know, it's at, uh, it's at 1030 in the morning and it's outside. And my philosophy is if you help the parents, you're helping the kids. Yeah. And they were just like, we love it. What do you want from us? And I said, I'm going to just put together a cover letter for you. You could just put it in the kid's lunchbox if that would be helpful, if that would be okay. And they're like, yes. So I went and I made like, I don't know how many like versions of these, um, these letters I went through, postcards I created and everything, getting slipped into kids' postcard, uh, lunchboxes. I would go out every <laughs> three months. And I would try to get, uh, I would, I would try different ones at different times of the year, giving discounts and mm. it just, it was <clears throat> never ending. I did it for, oh man, how long did I do it? Like, I think I did it for like four or five years. Wow. Like maybe not that long. Maybe, <laughs> I mean, I stopped doing boot camps about four or five years ago. So okay. maybe that was like three or four years, whatever it was. Yeah. It was a good chunk of time where I had, I had these, you know, I was constantly trying to get people in and I would get people to come and I would have a good turnout and I would make like a couple thousand dollars a month from it. Yeah. But the amount of work I had to put in, it was like <laughs> that couple thousand dollars a month is basically two clients. Yeah. If I had two clients, that would have been the same amount of money and I wouldn't have to be running around. Yeah. So, so after, um, really, I think some, I, Devin and I, this was exactly four years ago because we moved to a different part of the city. I live in uh, Jefferson Park, part of Los Angeles. That's about, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes from where I was teaching those classes. Um, and I realized this is not going to work. The time is not going to work. And I had to basically, I just had to cut the cord on it and let it go. And I had a lot of people that were in there. I just basically let the memberships all run out. Uh, and I said, you know, I told them, I go, look, this is going to be the last class is going to be on X date. We had a good little turnout for the final class and, and it was sad, you know, it was sad because we definitely had an amazing community. If you scroll back in our Facebook page, like you'll see like a whole bunch of like really fun outdoor workouts with people. And yeah. I feel like we built such an amazing community, but just financially, I couldn't get it off the ground because of, you know, bad timing, not enough, you know, just, and then the overhead, depending if I was outstretched to a different park, it was going to cost me $60 an hour. <laughs> wow. And I had to pay in advance. And if it rained, I didn't get my money back. And wow. if nobody showed, I didn't get my money back. <laughs> so it was like, it was, I, I just yeah. financially just couldn't make that decision. So, okay. so yeah, so that's what happened. So that was gotcha. like the last, that was the next four years. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, open sky fitness, uh, when did that come into play and, and how did that get started and why I'm guessing open sky fitness is because it's outdoors, right? Or is that's there right. some other reason? <laughs> no, that was exactly it. Actually. Okay. I named the company before, right after I took my first client and I was, and I started training people outside. When I first, I think it was when I first put up that Craigslist ad was when oh, I, I think okay. bought the domain. Cause gotcha. I was like, I'm going to train them in this park. It was a La Brea Tar Pits park. Uh, everything's outside under the open sky. And, uh, I was like, what about open sky fitness? And it was the domain was available. Everybody loved it except for one of my friends, and uh, and so I, 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 there's always that one fucking guy. Yeah. I'm sorry, sorry. It's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, so I went with it anyway, and um, yeah. So here we are, 11 years later. Whatever, gotcha. So whatever. so what does it look like now versus back then? Like, what is the the structure of, of Open Sky Fitness to, today? So now, you know, I still have one-on-one -on -one clients okay. that I train in Los Angeles. I'm, uh, I'm transitioning and I have online clients as well where it's more like this conversational yeah. where I do help coach people through having a, you know, creating a healthier lifestyle around the craziness that is their life. Hmm. Right. And then I do, uh, and then I also host a, uh, challenge online as well. Yeah. Um, and my goal uh, eventually, just as a business person, my goal is to have just online clients and just um, online programs 
uh, community programs where there's like a bunch of people really working towards the same thing, very intimate. And yeah. have that, uh, and have that be the bulk of what I do. Yeah. Um, because which we haven't really, really, you know, talked about yet because we're due to have a baby in August <laughs> and, Congrats. um, and thank you. Yeah. Uh, and we're super excited. We're having a little girl and I want to be able to, I want to kind of be a stay at home dad. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, I, I think it's a, I think it's possible. Yeah. Um, uh, I just haven't figured it out yet. You know? <laughs> and that's my, that's my, that's my mission. My mission is to be a really present stay at home dad and be able to work from home and still provide the same kind of service and, and, uh, and help to people that really do need it around their health and their wellness. Yeah. Well, you know, for me, speaking from experience, I've learned that as long as you have the, the why, uh, of your goal and, and you're, you're consistent and you're willing to work hard, the how will take care of itself, right? As long as you have the, um, you know, the persistence and then that why, Every single day, reminding yourself why I don't want to do this, and then the how. Yeah. Eventually, we'll, we'll figure itself out. But um, you know, I'm I'm curious to know. You know, you've been in this industry for a while. You said <clears throat> you were helping your first client, and you know, you probably didn't help them the healthiest way possible. How has right. your approach to help helping clients shifted over the years? And I'm talking yeah. specifically about both fitness from a fitness perspective, like exercises yeah. that you do now versus then, and nutritionally. You know, how have you um, shifted your you know, your, your philosophy on that over the years? Um, well, in terms of the, in terms of the fitness, it's a, it's a lot more structured. Mm -hmm. I think I, you know, in the beginning I didn't necessarily believe that weightlifting was necessary mm -hmm. and I don't necessarily <clears throat> look, I, it's not like I think weightlifting is necessary in order to lose weight. I don't think any fitness is necessary in order to lose weight. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Doing, you know, following a very uh, healthy lifestyle, and that means like eating really healthy, taking care of yourself, um, and being, you know, just like focusing on like the the good things in your yeah. life, right? Uh, that you'll start losing weight. Yeah. It, it's just the reality of it. Yeah. Um, in terms of the fitness, though, the structure of it has changed. Whether it be like the SkyFit Challenge that we're doing now, which is mostly body weight work, mm -hmm. or doing like working with clients one on one, where I'm helping them to uh, put together um, lifting programs. It's really about the structure of it and basically following a regimen to where you are consistently checking your results. If you're not paying attention to your results, if you're not paying attention to whether or not you're, you're progressing, then you're kind of just floundering around and you don't know if you're, uh, if you're making progress. Gotcha. And that's, that's like a no man's land of working <laughs> out. It's like a no man's land of fitness. Um, and that's very common. I think that I probably did that way too much early on because I was just – focusing on, you know, other things. Yeah. Um, the more, the more structured I am with a client, like some clients and you probably see this, I don't know how, if you still train clients one-on-one, -on -one, probably not, but yeah. like the more, the more, like when you train clients, there are some clients that are, uh, they want that regimen. They want that. They, they want specific goals in a specific amount of time. Yeah. And then there are other clients who just want to show up at the gym because they want to check that box off. Yeah. And they don't really care if they lose weight. They don't really care if that means that they're healthy. They, they don't really have that much. And so I still have those clients who, you know, making progress isn't necessarily a priority them. And so I just, I feel for me, it's like, it's not as satisfying. Yeah. Uh, it's much more satisfying when a client's like, I want to achieve this by this time. Yeah. And I'm like, let's do it. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. And it's like, yeah. okay, so let's break this down. How do we do it? Let's create a roadmap to get there. And yes. you know, and, and you don't know, it's like, you know the why, right? I want to do it because of this. I know the length of time that it's going to take me to get there, but we have to figure out the how, and that's the fun part. And sometimes you change course throughout the, the way. Yeah. So I would say in the fitness realm, that's kind of like, that's how I've evolved, uh, in the nutrition realm. Yeah. I've leaps and bounds in the last <laughs> in the last four and a half years since I've since I've um, started this podcast. Yeah. Um. I my podcast is like a master class in <laughs> in nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, uh, just just like life organization. I'm not saying I got it all this figured out. That hmm. I do not have, but I do have way more experience than the average personal trainer that lives in Los Angeles. Yeah. Some of the, you know, some of the people that I talk to about the things like even mentioning the ketogenic diet to some personal trainers, it blows my mind that there is, <laughs> there's that not every single personal trainer has heard about the ketogenic diet or the paleo diet or intermittent fasting. Like the fact <laughs> that that's not even on their radar is scary to me. Yeah. You know, because it just means that they're not, first of all, they're not up to the times of what's mm -hmm. actually happened. And that means that they're not being optimal with what they're trying, how they're trying to help their clients. Yeah. So, um, so that's kind of, 
where I've taken. My wife, Devin, who's the co-host of my show, she is a holistic nutrition counselor. Mm -hmm. So when, and it's great because when I, there's tons of stuff I don't know. I mean, the more you know, the more you realize you don't, right? <laughs> so. The, so as I as I grow and learn new things, I'm constantly checking with her. She's learning, growing, and you know, helping me, and I'm helping her. And uh, I think we've I think now in terms of our focus with our clients and our, and how we help people, the way that it's evolved is really trying to integrate all of these things, whether it be your fitness, your nutrition, um, or you know maybe it's mental health. How do we integrate that into your lifestyle that already exists? Because the problem that most people have is that they think I'm just going to I'm going to do P90X and then I'm and then that's going to fix my life. Yeah. Right. But what you're doing is you're trying to shove a three month program into an already stacked life that it doesn't necessarily have the foundation to support that mm. for a long period of time. Interesting. And so so what we do is we take all the pieces, whether it be the ketogenic diet or the paleo diet or inter intertwining uh, intermittent fasting into the process or just getting people to eat whole food yeah. uh, or just getting people to take a walk once a day for 10 minutes. How do we integrate that so it's not a complete disruption in their life and yeah. allow them to feel like they are making progress? What are the easy wins that they can check off every single day that makes them feel like they're making progress? And, and, and slowly etch them towards. And the next thing you know, six months has gone by and you're like, oh my God, if we look back and we think I wasn't doing any of this stuff and now <laughs> I'm, and now I'm working out five times a week and now I'm eating like a majority whole food diet. I'm drinking 80 to hundred ounces of water every day. Um, I'm focusing on my, on meditation. I'm focusing on my relationships. I'm focusing on my happiness. I'm focusing on my work and how to like organize my life. And like all of these new things have been integrated. But if you had tried to go from zero to six months, it would have been impossible. Yeah. And that's what I think. I think the difference between maybe how I work and how a lot of different uh, online people work as well as personal trainers in Los Angeles. They try to take you right through the gamut, right from the start, and it's complete. It's a fire hose yeah. of information. So yeah. I, I'd say that's that's probably the major difference. I was a fire hose <laughs> five years ago. <laughs> gotcha. That was mis that was misled, maybe yeah. slightly. You know? Well, <laughs> it, it's hard because you're kind of uh, you know you're soaking in all this new information. You're you're seeing amazing transformation with yourself. And you're like, this is awesome. Like my life is changing. I want to spread the message. I want to pay it forward. I want to tell people about this. And yeah. you know, the, you have people at like ground zero that still think, you know, maybe, you know, diet soda and uh, you know low fat triscuits are you know a good approach <laughs> to, to right. losing weight. Right. And you're trying to tell them all the stuff about keto or paleo or, or veganism, whatever it is, and they're just like, um, okay, so what do I eat? Like what what yeah. like what do I do? Like what does this mean? <laughs> you know? So yeah. It's hard because you want people to go from A to Z where you are, and uh, instead, uh, it sounds like you take the time to go. Okay, let's get you from A to B, right? Let's just start right. there, and then from yeah. there, we'll have to work on B to C, and then C to D eventually, and then maybe you'll see over time that they'll make progress, and and not maybe not everyone's happy at Z, maybe not everyone wants to be that strict all the time. And no, so, that's what I was talking, <clears throat> that's what I was meant like before we were talking about Dave Asprey, right? I think before yeah. we jumped on, and Dave's amazing, but Dave is at Z. Yeah, <laughs> Dave is Z. You know, Dave Asprey. If people don't know, is like the bulletproof diet guy. He's all about biohacking, and basically, he's about getting your life so unbelievably tuned in that you are a machine, yeah. right? Like kind of like Ben Greenfield, where you're superhuman. Yeah, and it's like. <laughs> I don't want to be superhuman. I just want to be, I just want to feel good. I don't, I want to, I want to be, I want to feel like I've, I'm not going to drop of a heart attack. I'm not going to have diabetes. And I'm also going to teach my kids how to live a lifestyle that's not all obsessive about being healthy. Yeah. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like there's such a fine line between being obsessed about health and just being healthy. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's a great, no, that's a great point. And that's why I think people, you know, in the health and fitness industry, you know, they, 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 they think they need to be a Z to be healthy. They think yeah. they need to look a certain way to be healthy, but it's like, just find your happy balance, right? And maybe your happy balance is being, you know, 15 and 20% body fat, but your, your blood pressure is good and your hormones are good and all your lipids are good. And you know, you're not super strict all the time, but you know, you, you're aware of your unhealthy habits and you kind of have them in check and you you have a happy place. And maybe that works for a couple of years. And then maybe a few years later, you change it up. 
even for me, like the way I do keto now is different than the way I do keto a, a few years ago. So I think we're always evolving, changing, upgrading, and that's that's the key right there. It doesn't always have to look the same way. Like, oh, I gotta diet down, be super strict with my diet, lose weight for this wedding, and then I'll go back to my old ways again. Yeah. Um, it can fi- be a, a, a sustainable lifestyle over time. So totally. um, yeah, I love that that's what you do, and I think it's really important for clients. and. Um, uh, let's talk about you <clears throat> and your wife being pregnant <laughs> and how yeah. you, you expect that to change the game for you and, and your family and your business as well. Like, How is that yeah. going to change? Or what are your expectations for that? <laughs> well, I don't know if you felt like this, Drew, but mm-hmm. I feel like right now we are in the final three months. We're due in August. Um, I feel like I'm in a mad dash scramble to get everything in order before the baby comes. Mm-hmm. Like the, we've got a room that's in shambles that's not even, got to paint that room, got to get all the furniture in, got to get a baby shower, got to collect everything. Where are we going to store all of it? What are we going to throw away to make room for all of that? Yeah. You know, there's all of these questions. And then it's like, we already have unbelievably full lives. Yeah. Jam-packed. <laughs> Like there's no wiggle room. It feels like, you know, in my life, I feel like I'm stuck on one side or the other. I don't know. I don't know how much more room I have. You put a baby in that. And then this is actually my excited part of this. I don't know if this is true, but this is what everybody says to me. It's like, you know, when you have a baby, everything in your life, everything that you thought was important, you just, you take a real new look at and you just really redial into actually you find out what really is important in life. Yeah, it's true. And that, and that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Because I know that I am so I'm I have so many focuses. I'm just like, you know, my online business, my personal training business, we have we have Airbnbs that we that we host behind us. We have rental properties that we have in Los Angeles. Uh, my wife's got her business. She's also does acting as well on the side. Wow. We're like we just we have so many different like my accountant is like we're going to need 4 hours to go all through all of this, you know? So it's like, how do we, now we're going to, we're gonna squeeze a baby in that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it's the same way that we have to, we would approach this from a, like from how we would coach somebody, which is let's take it from A to B. All right, let's start getting, let's start getting this house ready. Yeah. Right. Let's start getting, you know, if it's, you know, whatever it is, let's, let's, let's start. We're going to, we're talking about birthing classes. We're taking birthing classes right now. We're considering having a home birth, which freaks a lot of people out, but we're really natural. We, I, I actually bought the domain barefoot and primal. I uh, got gotcha. the, uh, you know, got like, like, I think that's probably might be one of the, r- r- the directions we go because I think that, I think that it's, it's a whole nother lifestyle that I'm about to step into. That's not just about fitness and nutrition. Yeah. It's really about how do you become this unit, this three person unit that really does, you know, that does operate well in this world. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go, but I'm just trying to take it one step at a time <laughs> and scares the, the Jesus out of me. Yeah, that's the thing is like you don't really know how to be like a good parent, how to fit everything in. You just eventually do it. It kicks in. It's this uh, innate thing that I think all of us have. You just adjust and adapt as humans to you know go from zero babies to one baby. And then from one to two, it's like how am I going to do, do that? And then two yeah. to three or whatever, you adjust and you realize that. You know, those things that used to be priorities or important to you are like, oh, that's not that important anymore. It's okay. I can let that go. Um, yeah. Even for me, like being obsessed about my body uh, has evolved over the time where I'm like, you know what? I really don't care about being ripped all the time or 5% body fat. Like, yeah, I like to be in shape, but yeah, I can be happy, you know, between 10 and, and 15%. Like, I'm good. Like, it's not, I need to be obsessed about, oh, I got to sacrifice time with my family, you know, or to go just to go to the gym you know, seven days in a row, like I can take a day off and, and be at peace with it. Or I can yeah. like, well, yesterday was my daughter's birthday. I'm like, look, I'm going to eat some birthday cake with her and have fun. It's going to be awesome. And I'm not going to feel guilty right. about it. Right. Um, cause at the end of the day, I think we need to realize there's more to life than being, you know, uh, in shape. <laughs> so, right. No, you're, you're a hundred percent right. And you know, it's interesting because I feel like uh, so your thing, it sounds like is like y- you, you are afraid that it, maybe it's going to impact or somehow alter your health, right? Yeah. For me, I'm not worried about that. In fact, I feel like my health is, my health is interesting. Like I, I, I definitely have my own struggles. We all do. Um, but at the same time, I feel like my, um, my laser focus, my direction is, is getting, is getting my online business up and running, not feeling like I have all of the, the tools and, you know, or the, the pieces in place for that before the baby comes. And, and I feel like I'm really kind of obsessed about it at this point and, and not necessarily the best way, 
but I've always made time for being healthy. I kind of just squeeze it in. I don't make it like my priority being healthy, but at the same time, it's so ingrained in my lifestyle to like cook my meals at home and prep my meals and take them to work with me and find time to work out three to four days a week and do that kind of thing and 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 spend time meditating just here you know here and there where uh, I don't feel like I'll lose that I feel like what's what's the thing like the the problem for me is going to be I want to be able to step away from this desk and be like I'm going to go hang out with my kid yeah, yeah. you know that's what <clears throat> I'm that's that's my major concern yeah. I think as a, as a dad because I know that my dad was very much into getting work done. Yeah. And very, like I don't, I, like a, as a kid growing up, it was mostly my mom. I spent all my time with my mom. Yeah. Um, and my, I had four older sisters as well. So <laughs> yeah, so it's like I was, you know, I didn't That's have it. that guy, I didn't have that guy time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I get it, man. Well, uh, either way, congratulations. It's gonna be awesome for you, man. Super excited for you. And um, uh, before we go, uh, let's talk about this uh, this challenge that you mentioned. You mentioned it a few times during. What is it? How do people learn more about it? Where can they go? All that yeah. stuff. Awesome. Well, thank you. The uh, so it's called the SkyFit Challenge. Yep. It's a body weight workout that's uh, six days a week, but it's it's um, it's it's only twenty minutes. Gotcha. So just like what we talked about, it's like finding time to squeeze twenty minutes into your day. Uh, six days a week is not necessarily impossible, but also it's not mandatory to do six days a week, right? We built it around the whole entire challenge is built around building habits. Mm. And so we have very specific habits that we implement, like drinking a certain amount of water, uh, eating a certain amount of vegetables in a day. It's all about building a lifestyle that is manageable. And there's a community around that as well of people that are doing it. And it's a small community. It's a very intimate community. Basically, everybody knows each other and is talking about their process and 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 how they improve. So it's all encompassed in like a Facebook group. Um, Devin and I are in there every single day, hanging out with everybody, really kind of helping people that, you know, that need help, answering questions for people that are struggling, whatever it may be, and then cheering people on when they're crushing it. Yeah. Um, so like, so the last one that we did, we had an eight week challenge and there's a guy that's in there that actually was on the wrestling team with me in high school, oh, Wow, <laughs> was listening to my podcast. I had no idea. I jumped on a call with him to, cause he's like, I have some questions about, I was like, let's jump on a call. He's like, I was like, Hey Pete, uh, what's going on? And he's like, Rob, it's Pete. Pete O'Leary from high school. I'm like, get the hell out of here. Are you serious? He's like, I, I, the last time I saw him was in, you know, 1995. And he's like, I've been listening to your show for a couple of years now, man. I found it somewhere on Facebook or something. I love what you guys are doing. I want to be a part of this. And he lost 30 pounds in eight weeks. Wow. And I like, and it's not like one of those kinds of diets. It was, it's not like a hardcore diet. He's like, I've never yeah. experienced something like this where I just feel like I'm just altering my lifestyle and the weight just started falling off. Yeah. So, the, you know, and he's still in it, you know, he's just repeating it and staying in the community, which is what we hope people do is just stick around in that community. And he's, you know, and he's still doing really well and, uh, and dropping weight and maintaining and like, you know, it's all about, it's all about plateau, drop, plateau, drop. And yeah. then just, and then once you reach a certain place, it's like, this is my, this is where I live. This is my weight. And, you know, yeah. if I feel healthy, if I feel strong, then that's what I want to do. So anyway, uh, th that's what the SkyFit Challenge is. Okay. Uh, if people are interested in joining or checking it out for more information, they can go to openskyfitness.com slash challenge. Okay. Uh, that's the link to it. There's videos in there, testimonials, some pictures before and afters if they're interested in checking a look at that. Uh, and then they could also message me there and ask questions directly uh, to me. Gotcha. So, so that's basically the challenge. And yeah. if somebody's not ready to take on something that like that, that's that big, we also have a seven day paleo reset uh, okay. that we'll be launching again very soon. And by the time this airs, I'm sure it'll be up and running or at least people can get on the waiting list for it. Um, and basically what it is, is just like a, it's a, like a very quick deep dive into a paleo diet. Uh, I know that you're mostly ketogenic, but I yeah. think the thing that we, you and I can really agree on is that a whole food diet is the way to go. Yep. Um, so uh, the, this paleo diet is, is straight up whole food. Uh, eat some, we have some amazing recipes in there, uh, that are, and it's step by step, follow these, this meal plan, follow these recipes. These are recipes that are pulled right from my kitchen. Uh, I took all the pictures in there are pictures that I took of the food that we were eating. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so created this thing. We did one last time we had one guy in seven days, lost seven pounds. Wow. And it, you know, it all depends. It's all relative, right? I say yeah. seven days, seven days. It's relative. It's like somebody can, if somebody has the weight to lose, they can lose that weight, you yeah. know? 
we had another woman lost five pounds in seven days, and it's just because she has the weight to lose. Yeah. Obviously, if you don't have that much weight to lose, it wouldn't be that drastic <laughs> of weight loss, but it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so if they want to find out more about the seven day paleo reset, uh, they can they can message me, um, and the way to do that very quickly is go to openskyfitness.com slash paleo paleo reset. Okay, gotcha. Uh, is, yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll put that, a link to that in the show notes. And then what about the link to the, the SkyFit Challenge? So the SkyFit Challenge is openskyfitness.com slash challenge. Slash and challenge, the reset, okay. And the reset is openskyfitness.com slash paleo reset. Yeah, it. Awesome. Super easy, super simple to remember. What about social media? Where can people find you, Rob? Everything is Open Sky Fitness. Okay. So, and actually, we do have an awesome Open Sky Fitness podcast community of people that listen to our show. Yeah. So, if you listen to our show, or you know, if you come from here and you listen to our show, and you decide that Rob's not a total moron, and that <laughs> you, you like the dynamic between my, me and my wife, then you can then you can join the Open Sky Fitness podcast community. Uh, it's the Open Sky Fitness podcast group on Facebook. Uh, we are, it's an amazing group of people. People constantly having conversations uh, just like this. Okay. You know, it's nice when you have you when you feel like you meet somebody that that gets it, and uh, and I think the people in our community really just get it. Yeah, so that's okay. fine. Okay, well, thanks, Rob. Really appreciate it, man. Uh, you said you you still train a few clients here and there. Are you still in the industry of training actors, or have you kind of uh, you said they're flaky? Oh. And they're broke, so you still train actors. <laughs> I do have a couple of actors that I train. Um, yeah. They're not broke, uh, and I do <laughs> train. The, but the, I'll tell you, the, the 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 I shouldn't say the money, or but the the real stability is in training producers, mm. uh, training movie producers. So my wife and I, we share some movie producer clients that we have that are you know very successful, um, and those we've had them for years and years and years, and they're gotcha. fucking, they're just amazing. They're 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 amazing people. Yeah. So. That's cool. More so than actors. Actors, yes, they 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 go away. They go on shoots. Like I have an actor right now that's you know out of town. He's he's you know you know in New York shooting something. So yeah, it's just how things go. That's how it is, man. Well, Rob. And, then I, and, and then yeah, and then we don't and then we don't make any money, right? So that's why. <laughs> it's all good, man. Yeah. Thank Rob. Thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate you and uh, and everything you do. So thanks for coming on, man. And we'll see you next time. If you guys are listening to this, go check out Rob Open Sky Fitness. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Really appreciate the love and support, and we'll see you guys next time.